Hey guys, it's Species Sims, and we are back with more Mystic Destinies, and we are about to go to the cosmos of the detective. I can feel myself shaking. I can't take my eyes off the motionless form on the ground. Blood is pouring from everywhere. The man's eyes, ears, and mouth, and for some reason, my hands are up. Did I do this? I feel a wave of nausea come over me, looking at the man on the floor. I can hear the other me thinking in the background, too stunned to realize my presence. Is he... I take the opportunity to wrest mental control away from her, despite how horrified I am. Looking around the room, I see a small woman with transparent wings and two black-haired men fighting hooded men, clearly winning as they take down their opponents. Seriously, though, what the hell is going on here? I hear a metallic click right next to my head and the feeling of cold metal suddenly against my temple. I can't even turn around to see who it is. In this moment of stillness and absolute fear, my eyes drift to the center of the room, where Takumi, of all people, is grappling with a man in a hood. I'm with... Takumi? I see bodies everywhere in the room, and I have no idea where I am or what's going on. This is his mess? My god, just kind... What kind of awful shit is he into? He's lying on the floor, on his back, a knee in the vampire's stomach as he relent as he's relentlessly stabbing him. And yet, when you get... She's like, what the fuck kind of shit? And yet, when you go... Takumi's route was, like, really one of the best written. I feel my knees threaten to buckle beneath me at the image. Why am I in this situation? What the hell is wrong with this me? My stomach seizes up in fear and disgust. But I know if I make one wrong move now, I'll have a bullet in my head. What happens if I die here? Is this me immortal too? Tossing the vampire off of him, Takumi rolls to his knees and is about to get up when he looks at me. Then a gun pointed right at me. Then at the gun pointed right at me. And finally at whoever is holding the gun to my head behind me. The person moves slightly and I can finally see my assailant, though it gives me no comfort. No. There are some questions you should be asking yourself right now. Should yet another person... Should yet another person should die because of you. Okay. Editing. Is your comatose brother really worth your pretty girl dying for? Comatose brother? Yasu? Wait, I'm Takumi's girlfriend? Will you really make another mistake due to your own recklessness? Could you live with the guilt of this one? Taco is visibly thrown off and stares at her with wide eyes, trembling. He doesn't react, even as the other vampire rips his dagger away from him, throws it, and holds Takumi's arms behind his back. I'm scared, terrified out of my mind, but I try not to let it show. Instead, I think about how to get away from this freak show. The woman practically whispers, all traces of her smile gone. I am so terribly curious to see what will happen to you, my dear immortal. Ah. Ah. Oh, she, she screamed. Oh, hold on, wait. I was like, <laughs> I wasn't okay. The woman in red crumples to the floor. I spin around to see Sunika standing there, holding what seems to be the woman in red's large gun. And probably she spins it around her small finger with ease, making the heavy gun look as light as air. She looks around the room at the carnage. The one or two hooded people that remain standing simply stare at Sunika in shock, along with everyone else in the room. Sunika lets out a low whistle. Who are you? Takumi's question seems to catalyze oh, the one of the hooded figures into action. The one of the hooded figures into action. One of the hooded figures into action. And she lunges at Sunika with an inhuman roar. But Sunika only tilts her head and puts a tiny hand out with a smile. Where her hand stops, a ripple suddenly spreads through the air, outward and through everyone around her in a circle, including me. No. The others all freeze where they are, and I can and I find that I can't move either. Completely still like a statue. Yet I can't... S yet I can still see. I'm conscious. She must have stopped time. I will myself to move. To blink. But nothing happens. Really? People are so rude these days, don't you think? Well, pff, I say these days, but in reality, people never change. Am I right, oh immortal sorceress? Hmm, what to do here? I wanted to cause some trouble, but there's already so much. 
They're spoiling my fun. Fun? How is any of this fun? I don't like that. But it's cool. Sonika stops twirling the gun around. This thing must be a bit heavy, even for demon trash. Heavy enough to knock her out anyway. <laughs> hmm, I wonder how it shoots. I can only watch as Sunika, lightning fast, spins around and throws her gun-wielding hand out. Holding the gun askew, Sunika shoots the time-frozen Takumi point-blank in the chest. <gasps> Bang! I can't do anything. Not even scream. Sunika opens up a portal and steps through it, twirling her fingers at me in farewell. Toodaloo! The second Sunika's gone, time restarts, and Takumi immediately sucks in a sharp breath of pain and collapses to the ground. The bullet goes right through him and into what would be a the vampire in red, but he moves quickly out of the way, and a poor, unfortunate hooded vampire gets it instead. Takumi! I rush to Takumi's side, stumbling over some unconscious bodies. But the tiny-winged woman makes it there first, and props him up on her knees. Aurelia. Her name comes to me in a faint whisper. Takumi, what the hell just happened? Ugh, never mind. We need a healer. Fast! I'll do what I can in the meantime. Aurelia starts working, trying to heal Takumi, who's already near unconscious and groaning on the floor. I stand there useless, watching her small hands deftly work to stop the bleeding. What do I do? Why was I sent to this moment? This is a mess. If Sunika hadn't just appeared out of nowhere... If she hadn't appeared, what would have happened? Would I be the one bleeding out on the floor? Technically, yes, but she would have healed. Before I can so much as form another thought, Naoki suddenly grabs me and stares me down. Girl... Go to Hagawara. One of the best healers I know is Professor Kazama. If you want that boy to survive, find him and send him here. After he finishes up, send him to my home. June needs assistance too. With that, Naoki turns and goes to attend to what looks to be his twin brother. As he steps away from me, I manage to calm myself somewhat. I run out of the house with tears still running down my face, but I can hardly afford to wait. There's so much happening that I don't know how long it would take me to stop my tears. All I know is that I must find Hikaru for more than one reason now. The twins are gone when I get back. Aurelia is sitting on a couch, out of Hikaru's way, with worried eyes and small hands still covered in blood. She looks so numb, unmoving, as she watches Hikaru work. I can't say that I feel any relief, but I do feel less useless at having been able to locate Hikaru and bring him here. With my eyes glued to Takumi's pained, pale face, my mind starts to drift. When I, had a burst, when I had burst into Hikaru's office, he had seemed to instantly pick up that there was an emergency. I had managed to stammer out how there had been a shooting, and that a professor with a cold look and black hair had sent me here. I barely know who any of these people are, or what I'm supposed to go back to, but somehow I managed to save the address on my phone at least. Hikaru had immediately put his jacket on, ready to go. He followed me out without delay. Strange, I feel like I know those people. I remember their names but they all feel so distant to me at the same time. I stare out the window, at the moving scenery. My thoughts keep turning back to the carnage I saw. Seeing Takumi get shot right in front of me, I can't stop myself from replaying that image in my mind over and over again. The image of him just lying there, completely motionless in a pool of blood. His blood. And... When we got here, Hikaru had only grimly, had only grimly stared down at Takumi for a moment before getting to work. I have considered just telling him everything about my mission now so I can get out of here, but... One look at Takumi stops me in my tracks. No, I can't. I brought this mess upon this timeline, and I need to be the one that, to fix it. Professor, do you think you can really help Takumi? There's... There's so much blood. Is he alive still, after losing so much? Hikaru turns to me with a sad smile, but he never stops his work, not even for a second. You may not know this, but I'm pretty proud of my skills. I'm one of the best healers in Japan. I've brought people back from near death. Hell, maybe I can even bring someone back from the dead. Hikaru grows quiet. If I tried hard enough. Thinking of Takumi as dead, it leaves me feeling cold. Although we hadn't spent much time together lately, I would caught up with my childhood friend somewhere between the endless lessons that Hikaru was putting me through. I fight back the tears at the memory of my old friend, back when he was still much shorter than me. You better make it, you shrimp. I focus back on Hikaru. 
Can I help at all? Even though my healing isn't that good, maybe there's something? Hikaru shakes his head. Healers have to be experienced with working together or they'll just get in the way of each other. Please just trust me instead. I stand in the doorway, watching. I did decide to have faith in Hikaru's abilities, especially since I knew he is half a is a half god. That should count for something, right? If anyone could do it, it's Hikaru. I look at Takumi's body on the floor, drenched and surrounded by a pool of his own blood. So, so pale now. I feel my heart sink. I watch like a hawk to make sure his chest continues to rise and fall, but I can't actually tell anymore. There's a steady stream of blood leaking out of his mouth, and I desperately want to do something about it. Hikaru's face is as severe as ever and his hands glow, lying upon Takumi's chest. I glance up at Aurelia. She seems to simply be staring blankly at Takumi with no life in her eyes. I look back at Takumi's unconscious form. He looks so cold. So dead. Why does he look so dead? He's alive, right? He's fine, right? He's going to be fine, right? Seconds stretch into minutes that feel like hours with no change, except sweat beating and dripping and dropping from Hikaru's forehead. I stand there, shaking, unable to sit or move or do anything myself. Finally, Hikaru stands up. I want to move towards him, but I can't bear to cross Takumi. Instead of meeting anyone's eyes, he looks out the window and shakes his head. In a barely audible whisper, he says the two words I didn't want to hear. I'm sorry. That's it. That's all that's said and the room goes completely silent. The silence seems to intensify until it's nearly deafening, yet no one moves or makes a sound. I can't believe Takumi died! My mind is blank. My eyes just fall into Takumi's deathly pale body and the never-ending stream of blood coming from it. I look at the small winged woman, almost expecting her to be able to do something. As if she, an actual Denzian of this timeline, denying it. As if she, an actual Denzian of this timeline, denying it, would somehow make the truth less real. But she doesn't say anything. She merely stands up and walks over to Takumi's body. She kneels by his side, uncaring about the blood. She takes his pale hand in her dark one and simply bows her head. I look at Akaru, who doesn't even glance back at Takumi's body as he moves past me. I don't turn around to see where he's going. I hear the door close behind me. Bitch, you gotta get the soul fragment! I mean, I'm sad. Takumi's dead and all, but get that. Barely anything changes in the room. Not Aurelia's position, and not Takumi's. Not ever again. The only thing that does change is that small drops of water fall from Aurelia's hidden face, covered by her hair, falling and intermixing with the blood on the floor. That's when something snaps. Something snaps in me. Something breaks and I can't take it anymore. Can't take being in this room anymore. I spin around on my heel and head to the door, throwing it open. I stop outside in the hallway. He said he'd save him. He said to trust in him. I can barely contain my anger. I want to scream and punch something. Someone. I'm going to find him. I storm down the hallway. I don't have time to go far. I don't have to go far before I find Hikaru himself. I almost bypass him entirely. There's a huddled figure hiding in the shadows of Aurelia's building when I come out, and I pay no mind to it, until I hear a choked back sob rip through the night. I stop and look back. Oh, Hikaru? Hikaru looks up, and I see the pitiful form is in fact him. Oh, Squatting down, holding himself in his arms, uncaring of his leather coat dragging on the, on the wet ground. He looks away, seemingly ashamed, but doesn't change positions. That's so sad! You said I could trust you! You promised us. Oh, why? Why? Why did Takumi have to die? I don't know. Could you... Could he have been saved if, if we got there quicker? Or... Or what? What could have possibly been done to save him? I don't know. I never know. Oh, that's what he said. I thought that was me. I don't know. I never know. Then what do you know? All the anger I felt vanishes from my heart, leaving only the immense pain. It feels as if it's caught in a vice, slowly getting crushed. I turn and plop myself down on the ground next to the crouching man. Thankfully, no one actually pays us any mind. Tears flow down my face before I even fully realize it. 
You said that you would save him. I whisper weakly. My voice cracks under the weight of tears. Kara doesn't answer this time. He doesn't have to. We remain like this in silence for a while. Until he eventually begins to speak. The music is like so fucking epic. It's times like this that I remember I'm human too. I hold such limited power. I don't know what to say or how to comfort him. I still can't entirely get over or even accept the fact that he seems so emotionally shaken as well. Is he acting? No, why would he be? Not after leaving like that. This isn't the first time it's happened that I failed to save someone. I always hope it'll be the last, but I'm so sorry. I've hurt you more than necessary by giving you false hope because I was overconfident. I'll remember just how weak I am from now on. I'll pay penitence however I can for the sin and others. I sense Akaru's deep pain, but I don't feel like I can do anything to remotely touch it. However, Akaru, this... It wasn't your fault. It's not your sin. It's... I take out Akaru's earring and show it to him. That's... Where did you get that? Are you... I nod. If this is anyone's fault, it's mine. I came here to try to save you, but Sunika followed me. She took advantage of the situation, of the chaos. She's... She's the one who shot Takumi. If it's anyone's sin, it's mine for coming here, knowing I would bring chaos in my wake. Karu says nothing. He immediately takes the earring out of my hand and gently strokes it with his thumb. Then maybe Takumi was the one who was punished because of the pride we both held. Still, it was Sunika who pulled the trigger. She's the one who needs to pay for all of this. I agree, but I don't know if I can do anything. I'm not powerful enough to stop a god. But you're not alone in this, are you? You have Galen on your side, and my mother, and the other Hikarus across the timeline, too. If there's any way to set this right, promise me that you will. Hikaru closes his eyes and places his hand over his chest, repeating what the previous Hikaru had done. As the soul fragment appears, so does the box Galen had given me, and I quickly secure the fragment. Looking into Hikaru's sparkling and intense eyes, I feel my own resolve strengthen too. I nod, numbing the pain inside of me for now. I focus on this growing feeling inside me, this determination to set things. With my task accomplished, I stand up. I then extend my hand to Hikaru, who looks up at me wide-eyed. He accepts my hand without comment, and I help him up to his feet. If there's a way, I'll find it, no matter how long it takes. In the meantime, please don't lose hope. When everything's set right again, we'll let you know. Hikaru merely nods and I look up at the sky. I'm not sure where the two gods are watching me from, but I find myself drawn to the moon. I feel the familiar tug on my soul. But even as I'm being pulled back into Galen's realm, I can't stop my thoughts. Isn't it just my own pride that caused all this? That killed Takumi? Isn't it just vanity that makes me think I have a right to risk lives? No, entire worlds. To save someone just because I owe them? Or why am I really doing all this anyway? Because you love him! In a blink, I'm back in my body again. The numbness from the other world follows me here. My eyes are trained to the floor beneath me, but when I look up, my eyes fall on Galen. He only stares evenly back at me. I feel like I've got some questions for the god, all right. I approach him with that goal. Ask if he can... I don't feel like we should yell at him because it's not his problem and we don't want to piss him off. I don't think we should bet. I think we should ask him. We should ask him because I feel like that would be respectful. Galen, yes. Can you help Takumi? Can you bring him back? I can. Really? Then... But I won't. What? Why the hell not? Because I cannot guarantee that it would be Takumi anymore. I... I would want to... I See, I don't think we should necessarily give up. But I... And I don't think we should change his mind. I want to really more like... I want a bird... Bird, what? 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 I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. 
she's screaming at me. I'm not sure if we should give up because I wouldn't be like, okay. But I'd want to know, like, what do you mean it's not Takumi anymore? I think we should try to change his mind. Unhappy with the god's answer, I feel white-hot anger take over my whole body. I get close to Galen and point a finger up at his face. Sounds like a lot of bullshit to me. Okay, try to change his mind, not fucking threaten him. There's a big difference. There's false advertising. I was bad choice. Either you're an almighty powerful god or you're a total fraud. Or maybe you don't really care about anyone but your fucking self anyway. Oh, oh no, Nara, please. Haruka starts wringing her hands. Please calm down. I refuse to. I'm tired of going through all this shit while he sits up here in his little safe place. He could fix it all with a snap of his fingers, couldn't he? But instead, people like Takumi and Hikaru have to suffer. Haruka walks up to me and places her hands on my arms, trying to gently drag me out of Galen's face. I, yeah, this is not... I wanted to, like, ask him, like, well, please reconsider, like, come on, reconsider not. I'm gonna get mad! Violently jab at him. Yeah, that was not... That's not what that said. That's not what I wanted to do. This is gonna go bad. It's okay, we can fix it. I, I understand you're upset, but please, I urge you to stop. Galen is usually as patient as he is powerful, but most any god would get upset with the level of disrespect you're giving to him right now. Why should I respect anyone who would sit by when he could be helping people instead? Yeah, I didn't want to disrespect him like this. I get up right in Galen's face. You're as cruel as you are useless. And Nora, no! Yep, that was bad. Galen leans down to get a closer look at me. And for the first time since he dragged me out of nowhere, I start to feel like I might choke. It's like the air around us becomes so heavy that I can barely stand. Cruel, am I? Someone call me outright evil and I see you in the same way as them. Oh, some call me. I am far worse than you can possibly imagine. <laughs> Just sounds so funny with the voice I had given him and the things. I hear Haruka's distant yell, but it feels like trying to hear things underwater. I... Yeah, we're gonna die. We just totally died. He killed us. Game over. He totally killed us. I didn't ask him to save Takumi. I knew not demanding. I wanted to do it, like, the nice way. Haruka's words die in her mouth as Inara disappears. She stares at the god who she has only known as kind. Even knowing his other titles, she always knew that he was. But in this moment, she could no longer see that part of him. Before her stood not Galen, her old friend, but Iowerth, the god killer. I'll go now. I'll take Hikaru with me. Ceasing to exist. I don't know that she deserved that fate, Galen. But I don't want to make you any angrier. I, I'm frightened of you right now. I'll go. Haruka gently cradles her son in her arms and places a tear-stained kiss on his forehead. And in a gust of wind, the two of them disappear. Galen looks up at the endless chaos beyond the walls of the Colosseum. Goodbye, old friend, he calmly whispers to the wind. He snaps his fingers and... The end. Okay, so... <laughs> ask him to re... Ask him to reconsider! Or ask him again was not point in his face and be a bitch and demand. That's not at all when I read that was like, I was like I wouldn't give up. I'd be like, come up, please would you reconsider? No. Okay. Fine. Not. Fuck you you son of a bitch. That's exactly why I didn't say demand he saved Takumi because I'm like, that's rude. He's a god. You don't demand shit from them. So that was not at all what that choice was. But alright. Anyway. Um, I obviously they did that instead of demand because then people would be like, fuck that, I'm not gonna demand, he's gonna kill me. Like, ask him to change his mind. That that's not what she did. She did not ask him to change his mind. Anyway. Um, so we'll do one more part, uh, because I'm gonna come back and we'll do obviously I'm gonna go back through I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to start from my last save, which was where we started in the last part. So I'm gonna go back through do everything exactly the same except for that last choice, and we'll come back in the next part on that last choice um and just give up <laughs> so i will see you guys next time remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more